Here we go, the famous curtsy joke, which is not funny. So let's unpack this a little. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel Leilani of Barbados. Words cannot express how elated I feel when I have come to the end of this docuseries episode two. That is why I'm here in the darkness of the night, chomping at the bit. I can't wait to share it with you. The season one episode two blurb reads, in 2016, the relationship becomes public and public scrutiny begins. Megan remembers school, family life, acting and activism before Harry. So this all starts out in New York. They're in some kind of Uber. It's very low key. She puts on her sunglasses. There's a lot of dead air. Apparently they're being followed by Pops, but there's no footage of that. It's just them talking about being followed by Pops. Do we have that pap on the scooter again? Yes, ma'am. Oh, we do. Really? Same guy? Same guy. Oh, my God. I've watched him go into this park and he'll be with us. Immediately, they reference Diana and how she was followed by Pap. Harry starts talking about how it's even worse for them with the Paps now because of social media and their victim, 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 even worse than Diana, who literally lost her life to Paps. So that's kind of a reach. And we get mummy again doria ragland appears she seems very uncomfortable very nervous almost on the brink of tears seeming very mentally unstable giving me very much i was an inmate in prison vibes and i'm really not socialized back into <laughs> the normal public <laughs> sorry she gives her take on when megan was dating harry and how it was so important and so impressive but get this not because she was dating prince harry but because she was megan markle dating prince harry well i guess that's a mom's take i mean you can't fault her for like thinking her daughter is the best and everything wow what are you gonna do? They start talking about how in Toronto this press frenzy started and her house was surrounded by paparazzi. And you can tell that Megan really loved it. Like she loved that she got this attention. She was made to feel so important. Little anecdote, I have a friend who was Miss Grenada who dated Lewis Hamilton and her parents' house in Grenada, in the Caribbean, tiny island, was surrounded by helicopters. And for me, I feel like, okay, that's normal. You know, like that would happen to you if you're dating a public figure. But, oh, woe is me. My house was surrounded in Canada. Then we go back to Doria, who says something very important, and we'll get to this later. But she says that Megan complained. I remember you came home one day from Immaculate Park. He's like, we live over a garage. I was like, yeah, that's it's a great house. spot. So Megan talks about after two years old, when her parents divorced, she moved to a black community with her mother. And then Doria comes and says, I remember asking Meg, did I feel like her mom? And she told me that I felt like her older controlling sister. I never forgot that. Uh, Doria seems like a very broken person, I would say. A broken woman, not a very strong woman. And... Not a very bright woman either. Megan visits her childhood school where she was elementary school in California and she gets to talk to her principal again. Much love, Megan. P.S. When I am rich and famous, when I write my life story, I will talk about you and the school so you will be known worldwide. <laughs> and I just thought this is a perfect opportunity to discuss with your principal about the whole detergent commercial thing and how it was really a class project and that it wasn't just you getting fame for writing a letter to Procter & Gamble. I thought it was a perfect opportunity, but instead Megan just decides to talk to her about like how she liked her so much or whatever. Continuing to remember her childhood, she talks about being a theater kid and that her dad took her on the set of Married with Children where he was a lighting director and she spent a lot of time there. I find even from this point, at this point, she talks about him as if he passed away. So I actually had to Google and find out like, okay, did he actually pass away or not? And he's still alive, but it's just how she talks about him that confused me, so I just had to double check. Again, Doria comes and says, you know, she was just way too smart for me. She was so brilliant, so smart that I couldn't even help her with her homework. <laughs> You're a whole entire grown woman who's been in prison. You really think that she's outsmarting you? Do you really think that? I feel like they could have actually just left her out of these interviews, perhaps it would have been better. So Megan then recalls her mother being called the N-word during some road rage incident and that her mother never explained it to her or never even spoke about it after that, which Megan understood because she, Megan, would have never been identified as black. So the N-word was never something that she ever knew about and her mom just never discussed it with her. I mean, I want to believe that happened. I also believe that her mother would not have said anything to her about it because she would have been like, okay, Megan doesn't even have to know about this. Like this will never happen to her in life. And then Megan does say, 
I was never treated like a black woman in the United States until she came to the UK. This is a huge part of this documentary because a lot of people are finding this extremely revolting. She was never treated like a black woman until she came to the UK. Why? I mean, I'm so upset that I, I'm going to try to get this through. I'm going to try to get this through to you. America had Jim Crow laws, civil rights movement, segregation, black people being abused and, and misused and not even counted as a whole person and all this kind. England never had that, by the way. And even when I went to the UK, I found it amazing how everything was so inclusive. Every commercial on TV or advert, as they call it in England, was so inclusive. And because UK never had these huge issues that America had, why did you think that in the UK, as a white looking, Italian looking, Spanish looking woman, you were treated as a black woman all of a sudden. But that's just not true. It's just not. If you weren't treated as a black woman in America, why would the UK treat you like a black woman? Ask yourself that and come again. Please read a history book, European history book, before you peg the United Kingdom or tar the United Kingdom, for lack of a better word, with the same brush as the United States of America. And I really just wanted to stop watching here. I got so frustrated, I literally just had to like pause it and stop watching it and collect myself and say, Leilani, are you back? And Leilani said, yes, you're back. Because I really want to just stop. So they start complaining about this whole like article in the newspaper straight out of Compton and suddenly that is like such a racist thing. I mean, honestly, it's not. Surely other people live in Compton besides black people. It is more of a socioeconomic, if not classist prejudice. And poor Harry, you know, he doesn't really have a brain of his own and he bought it hook, line and sinker. And he says, you know, we did need special treatment because it was a racial thing at this point. Whereas all the other women who married into the family and men and so on and so forth, they got scrutiny, but it wasn't racial. This white looking woman convinced Harry that Compton meant that they saw her as black and meant that they didn't like her. I mean, I think a lot of people would be very proud to be from Compton, white, black, Mexican, whatever they could be and be like, yeah, man. And, and I'm here now. I'm here in the palace now. And then Doria comes in. Well, they took pictures of all these bad parts of LA and Skid Row and this and that and everything. And these like not nice houses and stuff and said that we are from those parts, but didn't she herself, Megan, say, why do we live above a garage? Didn't she herself, Megan, in her podcast say, from the other side of town? That's where my mother's family lived. Again, I feel so sorry for the Netflix producers because if they have even an ounce of integrity, they must have found this very difficult to document or mockument <laughs> as it is. But they don't stop there. They actually go on to hyperinflate how this Compton racial thing that they just created out of the blue sky meant for politics and the elections that were happening in the UK. <laughs> this never happened, dude. Like, I literally was there. It never happened. Megan and the politics never, like, no, no, no time did these two meet at all. <laughs> then they come into, like, recent times and bring up this NAACP award, which we know they paid for. Yeah. Come a long way from Little Red Schoolhouse. Schoolhouse. Are you nervous? Yes. I just want to say really quickly here, because I know I want to say it, throughout the entire video, but I'm gonna say it first now. Where is the evidence? I've said this in so many videos I've done. Like, is there no single message? If you were in a court of law, you would have to at least come up with some messages, some metadata that was like, hey mom, people are racist. Oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I don't know if I should just put my hair in an afro because they're calling me a gollywog. I'm sorry, but there would be some kind of messages back and forth between somebody that you could say that. If you want to come up here and say these things, you have to say who said it, you have to say what was said and give it truth. Like this has no truth to it. After all that racial stuff, I guess we get a break and we get a whole bunch of dead air, literal bird watching, in fact because Harry loves bird watching. Papa is a bird watcher, so this is a really big moment. <laughs> but equally what's most important for the two of us 
is to make sure that we don't repeat the same mistakes that perhaps our parents made. Then she gets all these friends of no account to talk about how she was a massive superstar in Canada. She just had this wonderful life before H. I know I didn't mention that before they call each other M and H. I mean, this is really about her and promoting her as a person again with 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 really nothing with nothing to show from it at all basically everybody that features in this documentary is a whole and complete liar and they should each and every one of them be ashamed of themselves and where's elton john just wondering not here talks about when she was stalked by everyone under the sun and she just got stalked and stalked and stalked and they said yes but there's really nothing we can do because of who you're dating it's like so i'm just supposed to live like this they said yeah and then i got a death threat and then things changed because i needed to have security she got a death threat one death threat and of course, she gets the security in Canada, which was paid for by the British taxpayer, which didn't last very long because people caught on to it and were like, oh, what? How about no? When I did the Oprah video, I said that I didn't believe her because she didn't have any evidence of these things that she was talking about. I got death threats. You can look in the comments. I mean, I tried to remove a lot of them because I didn't like that toxic rhetoric attached to my youtube channel but you can see that i got so many death threats to the point where people were actually calling me worried about me so her megan sugars actually did the same thing to me that she's complaining about just because i said i don't think i believe her even though i wanted to i don't because she has no evidence yeah so i got death threats many <laughs> i'm just i'm not trying to do what about isms or whatever i'm just saying like if you're out in public if even if you're online as a youtuber like nobody knows me and i'm just like talking on youtube things happen where's my security team i think it just shows that her out of touchness is just off the charts and her self-importance is just off the charts and then after complaining about all these difficulties and threats and scaredness and whatever she just starts randomly laughing <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny if I look back at it now because now I know so much. <laughs> She's such a sociopath. It's, it's it's scary. It is scary. She talks about meeting the prince and princess of Wales for the first time and that she was just so authentic and so barefoot and so hugging them that it was a bit jarring for them. Read the room. Not everybody wants you all up on them with Princess Diana's perfume all up in their nose. Not everybody wants that. Oh, then she meets the queen. Here we go. The famous curtsy joke, which is not funny. Like I curtsied as though I was like. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, your majesty. Like, was that okay? So let's unpack this a little. You can see where Harry is looking off camera to somebody a friend or somebody has this very disgusted look on his face. And then as soon as he comes back in to her peripheral, when she raises up from this deep curtsy she's talking about, he switches his face instantly. Ha <laughs> smiling. And this went completely viral that she said this, of course. Everyone was like, what a hater ass bitch. But of course, Megan comes back and says, but I did such an amazing job with the curtsy that Eugenie and Jack and everybody was like, you're the best thing I've ever seen in my life. You're the best curtsy I've ever seen in my life. I literally could not imagine a better curtsy at the Nutcracker Ballet. Never have I seen it. <laughs> and I'm just, I added that part in. Okay, obviously. <laughs> she said the thing that worked most against her was that she was an actress. That's different from what you said 20 minutes ago, which was that was because you were black. Everyone was racist towards you because of that. Well, now it's just because she was an actress. That was the worst part of her. Anyway, she gets her mom, Doria, to say that she wasn't good at acting only because she was too brainy. She was relentless, which was amazing that she didn't throw in the towel. But if you're so brainy, then wouldn't you realize that like, this is not my shtick. I'm actually not good at this. Let me go and do some NASA engineering or something because I'm just too brainy for acting. Maybe figure out why. 
<laughs> humans are so buggy like me why do they have so many glitches maybe i can go to boston mechanics and figure out how to not only create a dog but create an ai human being artificial intelligence that actually does not have all the flaws that i have there is just so much she could do with those brains Sorry guys, my battery died. So I decided to change my tree, do my hair, and I'm back, okay? So I just wanted to finish up by talking about a few more things. Megan once again talks about the proposal and that they had some kind of furry convention where people dressed up as animals that they would like to be. We had a little engagement party and everyone was dressed in animal onesies and Meg and Harry were in matching penguin onesies because penguins make for life and they were so sweet. So if you didn't think the dog with the cast was weird enough that they kept showing on this engagement night, they then dressed up as animals, which is a niche culture. And you know, it is what it is. Suit yourself. But because they feel they have not annoyed us enough in this 55 minutes that we have sat through this. In the end, they talk about how their engagement was linked to politics, was linked to the nation of the United Kingdom. But this fairy tale is sort of embedding itself in a nation that is having a pretty toxic debate about the European Union. The audacity of them to link themselves to the elections is unreal to me, especially because the royal family is never linking itself to politics. So this is just another break in protocol that Meghan insists on doing. Yes, the Brexit and everything was all about her. Brexit, literally. No, we called it Megxit because you went about your business. Nothing to do with politics though. This was a very irresponsible take and it actually made me feel emotional. It made me feel like crying for the royal family and for history and just for anything that means anything. I just wanted to cry. And there she is over in America and California and Montecito trying to ruin the literal nation of the United Kingdom that she has no part of. Just live your life. How about you do that? Anyway, we shall persevere and I will be doing the next video, the episode three. I'm trying to get out before the next volume. So stick with me on that. I do realize that they have rented a $33 million mansion just so that you get a real glimpse into their life. They made sure to use somebody else's house so that you could see their authentic selves. <laughs> okay, I love you guys so much. Merry Christmas when it comes. But anyway, I will talk to you before because i'm going to do the next installment love you please don't forget to subscribe press the bell notifications because i'm doing this as quick as i can trust me love you bye Why did the world change me? Mm.